Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom and it's bright and sunny. Yes, it's sunny out here. It's unreal. Plus slippery for the old guy. Yes, slippery. Unreal. It sounds echoey too out here. It's so quiet and calm. There's a slight breeze to excite the flags. Yes, this morning we woke up to minus one Celsius, but feels like minus six. And that was like two hours ago when I woke up. Okay, I had to go for a pee. Ooh, that wind. All right, so it's actually warmer now. I'll have to turn to get out of the wind. There's the sun over there and it's bright. Is that better, Les Nessman? Okay, I can't see anything. Can you see me? All right. So it's plus 30 Celsius, but feels like minus 21. No, plus 21. Oh, I screwed up the writing. That's what happens when you're sober. And Johnny G is bringing the groceries and the beer today. The staff is at her Mickey Mouse job, so hopefully she can get some good groceries as she unloads Johnny G's. Oh. Freight truck. Oh, these lips are tough. I'm suffering today. I don't know why. Oh, that wind. I don't know if we can see it here. Ooh, that's getting windy. I might have to put the me phone inside. All right. But all the tracks yesterday from the mini hoe, it's just pure ice where the snow was compressed. Yes, the tracks compress the snow. It brings out the moisture and then it's slippery today for the old guy. All right. So today. The staff bought me these. I think they're like no-name peanuts, okay? But they're good. Yes, that's right. It was better than those little small jars that were getting expensive, so the staff bought me the big bag. So now I feel rich. I have lots of peanuts to the end of the world. All right, we'll keep scrolling this way. We're not sure what we're doing today. I'll be working unsupervised until the staff arrives later in the day. But we're not sure what we're doing today. We might get the loader out and move some of this stuff that's stuck in the middle of the yard here, you know, because the mini hoe just can't do it. Now that, how would you say, we need the forks. Oh, that sun is bright. Unreal. But today we're going to have a good day. I know people are having trouble commenting on the YouTube videos, but keep trying. Even just put a happy face or whatever, because I'm there. I reply to all the comments as best I can. And I'm enjoying myself on Tiki Talk, being able to comment. But they still remove some of my comments. For the first time in eight months, I'm able to comment. All right. The world's a screwed up place. So that's why I live at the end of the world in my happy place. Known as Wilderness Alaska, but in northern Manitoba. Well, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, successful morning in the shop. And we didn't start the wood stove because yesterday it was a low pressure system. And all it did was smoke us out. Did he open the door, do anything? It wasn't burning. Oh, it was just a nightmare. I've inhaled enough smoke from my childhood with mother smoking in the car so this morning make work project let's bolt the cab down and we did that and it worked out pretty good because we had what a week to think about it yes it was last sunday i think it was it was too hot in here so we got it bolted down with the rubbers everything is good use big washers to spread the load out so that worked out pretty good we're very pleased yes all right let's do the walk and talk video everybody's going forward here all right everybody i went and got the uh, front uh, drive shaft for the quad. See, we rode on it. Okay, so we can put the new U joint in, and then the staff will have four wheel drive. Yes. So, uh, oh, so that'll be so nice. And so now she'll get stuck twice as twice as deep. Oh, these lips need some vodka. Yes, it's just about lunchtime. So over here, this is the way we do it in Wilderness, Alaska. But at the end of the world, recycle, reuse, repurpose. That's our motto because we have no money to go out and buy new bolts or anything like that. So we sat here and picked through what we needed to get what we wanted. And it worked out good. And plus, you got to put the never sees on everything. So I look like the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz. Okay, after lunch, it's warm, but not warm. That wind is still chill, still chilly, but there's snow on the ground. That's maybe why it's chilly. Oh, these lips need more vodka. Just had enough at lunch. That was it. So I'm going to go in this trailer here. And these are the surplus transmission Sir Rodney sent us. Yes, right here. So we got the parts organized. So we're going to put them on the shelves over here. Plus, we need a motor out of here. Yes, a motor. That one up at the, in the middle. So that's not bad. It could be the one at the front, but we need that one that's in the middle. All right, let's get to work. We got a long day ahead of us. Okay, I just spent 30 minutes taking out the parts I need. Yes, that 39 Chevy parts truck that's in the trailer with the Muskeg buggy with the 46 Chevy cab. We're going to reassemble that truck. So why have all these parts and containers, right? 
if I put this truck back together just for around the yard and at my estate sale for Barrett Jackson to drive it across the auction block, it'll bring a total of $50 more than if it was all these parts on the shelves. So putting the, this truck back together using the parts and the inventory that I have, that frees up a lot of space, okay? So basically I emptied the shelves here, I emptied the ones under there, and this is the motor that came in the 30 eight maple leaf it has the open drive shaft at the back it hooks up like a normal drive shaft i gotta put this transmission on this motor because that's the closed in drive shaft which is those pieces over here are you following along if not have a drink and then you'll be just like me so this motor last ran i think in 2000 and 13 when the radiator went through the fan okay just a minor detail so this is scrap value at my estate sale but in the 39 chevy up and driving around this motor will bring uh, 50 dollars more than scrap value so that's what we do so we'll get rid of this motor put it in the 39 and that frees up a whole pallet space right so getting these parts out and reassembling with this stuff works out good. And it's best to do it now at my age. Well, my mind still remembers where all these pieces went. Oh, the joys of getting old. Okay, got the mini hole out to get the loader out. Yes, I got the loader out. And then I drove around and moved out that uh, big t uh, tote with the big wood. And that stack of pallets that accumulated over the winter. And that's why we keep the door clean in front of the loader shed in case we ever have to get it out in a moment's notice. Because in case the mini hoe froze up or quit, we could always drag it back. All right, so I got the loader over here. Okay, I can't set up the tripod with the me phone because the loader with the straight stack has a very tinny sound and it's hard to, how would you say, govern on the videos. Okay, this is the loader for the new viewers or Kingdom followers or YouTube subscribers. It's a 922 Caterpillar loader, 1969 rear wheel steering. So the back end spins around. So it's hard to, how would you say, negotiate or get used to. And the fact that in the 60s, Caterpillar, any heavy piece of equipment did not have much brake. So we used the park brake and hope for the best. All right, so it came with a bucket and it came with the forks that are added on later. And since how we do scrap metal, we have four forks on the bucket or on the... On four forks on it okay so the best way to work on the parts we're getting out of the trailer here is to lift the table up yes work smarter not harder load it on the table and then it can go into where it's heated warm so you can play with the parts to see what we need okay coffee time in the kingdom and let's try this again the me phone didn't record it recorded in mono it's very funny so i went back and forth from the parts trader there packed the snow down so now the snow is brown it'll melt quickly so i have to relearn how to drive that 922 loader because it's rear wheel steering plus it's got four forks all right so i put everything on the table here and these pallets will go in the loader shed right here yes heed that's a two and a half ton overhead crane from the mine that we scrapped and it was very nicely cut out back in the day so we put it on there and the loader doesn't have to go back in the loader shed anymore. It can stay outside because I think it's officially spring, summer. Plus, I don't have to disturb the dogs all the time when I want to get the loader because they get upset when their bed is moved and everything. All right, so over here, we got everything on the table. We got a lot of new parts and stuff like that to put this 39 Chevy back together. The staff and I will get it out of the parts trailer tomorrow because it's Sunday. She has a day off. We're going to be calling it the 39 Chevy snow truck because we'll tell you more details tomorrow. But let's use up these parts, okay? So these parts on the stockroom shelves or the parts room shelves will never be used even 50 years after I'm dead, okay? This is scrap value. So the, all these new parts, some of these parts we can reuse. Like this truck will never be on the road because it'll be on snow. And Sir Rodney sent me back in the day the Kingpin Reamer kit. And we photographed everything how to do it because that's my memory. So we got a lot of new parts and everything like that. I'll stop the video to check see if it recorded this time. Okay, that recorded. So the 39 Chevy back in 2003 when it got the 256 cylinder out of that 68 Chevy C10 I think it was. The transmission was changed out too because you have the open dry shaft and closed dry shaft. So this is the transmission for the 39 Chevy that I bought in 1984 and it was used for parts for the Maple Leaf truck. The Maple, this is the top off the Maple Leaf 
and it had a broken shifter fork so we changed it out back in 2012 2013 i think it was so this is the motor from the 38 maple leaf truck it's got written on there it runs and i removed it in 2019 when we did uh, frame shortening and everything like that and we quit using it because the fan went through the rad or the rad went through the fan just a minor detail so we took the top off of the 39 chevy truck and we put it on here so we could drive around the yard to how would you say put the fan through the rad or the rad through the fan so we're going to take this apart i want to see what the clutch is like because i have a new clutch in stock so let's see if we can get it apart and we'll get this oily transmission back into the storage trailer so we know where it is and we put a lot of new parts on this motor back in the day so this motor has no value okay it's got a new water pump new spark plugs everything distributor everything like that was all redone carburetor we have new starters and stuff like that in the shed it has no dollar value just like this stuff over here so it's just scrap value here at the end of the world at my estate auction so assembling the 39 chevy snow truck together as a unit to drive across the barrett jackson auction block you know we can get 50 dollars more than what it's worth all right so let's get to work after we have a quick coffee with some vodka okay i use the mini hoe as a stabilizer yes a stabilizer and i got the transmission off and the clutch out and just like i figured we got broken springs in the pressure plate i mean the disc just a minor detail but that's okay that's why we took it apart so we can know if we have to order some parts or pieces i looked in the trailer there i didn't see the clutch that i bought uh, 25 years ago maybe i reused it or sold it for beer i don't know and i took the transmission apart here we don't need a PTO on the side here, so I covered, I'm going to make a cover plate. And the Maple Leaf transmission with the open drive line is right there, and the PTO. So now I'll put that in the uh, trailers for storage. Saturday morning in Whoville, and it's almost 10 a.m., and I'm just getting ready to head to work. I work at the store from 10 till 4 today, cleaning and doing a few other things. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in because I can hear them crying, and finish up my breakfast and get to work. 1.30 and I just finished up a little lunch. I got home at 1 p.m. As you can see, it is pretty nice out today. The sun is shining and lots is melting, so it should be fun when I go to the kingdom later. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in and get to work. I'm not sure what I'll be doing this afternoon, but I still have to mop and do a few other things. Just after 4 p.m. and I made home from work. It was a pretty good day cleaning the store. Already got the quad out. Now I'll head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. 4 30 and i made it to the kingdom now i'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to pretty sure he has the loader out and we're gonna head on over to the van trailer right here with the doors open and pull out my potato bins and all my soil and get that stuff ready because it is warming up so i do have to start planting soon hopefully we have a better season this year because i'm excited and i have more potatoes to grow and other things to experiment with so let's head down to the shop Almost 5 p.m. and now we're going to move the table and all these parts into the loader shed here since it doesn't have to go back in there. And of course the dogs won't leave me alone while I'm trying to record. The loader is extra loud so I won't be talking very much while it's running.
5 p.m. and we just got all the parts and everything into the loader shed. Now my dad's gonna put the mini away and then we'll head on over to the trailers with the loader and pull out all my soil bins and get those guys ready. Over at the van trailers now, my dad's just bringing the loader around since the green toy is kind of parked in the way. He has to go behind the house, but now we're gonna pull out all these pallets and organize them. Just pulled out one of my totes full of soil and they're just going up behind the house kind of by the tanks here and stuff so they can start thawing out and get a lot of moisture and then they can start being watered and we'll get the soil nice and fertilized so we can start planting potatoes and other stuff in them later on. Now I have to climb inside the trailer here and hook the little clamp which is right here onto the pallet so we can drag these pallets out and get this trailer all cleared up.
5 30 we're officially done hauling everything out of the van trailer it's just gonna sit right here for now until we're done organizing now my dad's gonna take the loader and go all the way back around behind the house and to the shop almost 6 p.m and i'm officially done in the kingdom now it's time to grab my dog treats and head on back into whoville to do my weather just after 5.30, I made it home from the kingdom and put the quad away. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and do the weather. 6 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's 3 degrees Celsius, which is 37 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty nice today. A lot has melted, but there's still some snow on the ground, but not enough to drive the skidoo around. So let's head inside, let the dogs back in, and make supper, and end my day. Okay, we're done for the day. I put the gas tank for the snow truck snow truck over there. All the parts are inside there. Everything's locked up, so we're good to go. The loader is spending the day of uh, the summer outside like it always has because it's easier to grab and go and I don't have to worry about the dogs. You have to think about the dogs. They are the number one priority here in the kingdom. All right, so let's look at the flags. Some of them are tangled, some of them aren't. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video, and we'll talk to you later.